Hi friend, long time no see. Got some parts in for the fender basement. So I think we're gonna replace the filter caps today and get that all sorted. Maybe some of the resistors in the power section and hopefully that takes care of most of its problems. I think it will. Uh, apparently I had sent a notification to everybody that I uploaded a video. That was just a test and it wasn't meant to be public. Uh, it wasn't meant to send you all notifications so sorry about that uh i'll work out those bugs too um but let's get these put in and see what happens that sounds good join me Uh, here's one thing to notice about these filter caps. They're all positive on this side except for one. So make sure you don't mix that up. I took this 70 microfarad out and we're going to measure it to see how it compares to the 80 microfarad that's going to replace it. A lot of times you can't get the exact value in the type you want. So if it's close enough, it's usually okay because these are going to be this one's going to be a little bit higher this one here is a 70 have another 80 here for that then we go to these 20 microfarads three of them we're going to replace those with 22s and this last one here's a 16 that gets replaced by a 10 microfarad it's not a big deal to be off on the capacitors. Um, basically, it's just going to smooth the waveform out on the rectifier just about the same. We're not going to tell much of a difference. In fact, this may be an improvement. I took this one out, so let's go measure it. If you have one of these LiftMaster, it is a, what is the number? It's a 888LM. You have to watch out for these two capacitors. They go bad and your garage door goes up. And it won't go back down until you remove this. So I don't know if I'm going to replace them. They did send me a replacement already. I don't know. I might put this in there. Might replace them and see if it's still worth keeping. Perhaps. That's for another time. All right. Here's our meter. And we're going to test and see what the leads have for resistance. 0 0.8, 0 0.9 almost. That's kind of a lot. Should probably make these sm shorter. Let's test it again. Can you see that? Now it's 0 0.72. Well, whatever. It's less than one ohm of resistance, so it shouldn't affect our ESR readings too much. Let me try to move this around so it could not have a reflection. You read that? Perfect. All right, we're going to hook this up to each side and we'll test it and see what happens. It's like we have a little bit more of an ESR and we have a, v, a voltage loss across it of 1.7%. That's interesting. That's, that's not good. This here, it's supposed to be a 70 microfarad. It's reading 110. So that's off by a little bit. So what's that, 40 microfarads? I don't think that one's in spec. So let's check one of our new ones that are 80 microfarads and see how they run. ESR still 1.2. I'm thinking it has a lot to do with the way I have these le cheap leads hooked up. It's off by a little bit and you only have a 0.5% voltage loss across it. So that's much better. It's a new part and we're going to bring it up on the Variac slowly to make sure everything's okay with it. All right, a lot of times you will see that when people replace these, they will cut them off with a lot of lead left, like this, and like this. That way, they'll have something to wrap the new lead onto. It just goes like this. 
this will wrap around there. The reason is, if you were to take this apart, let's do that. I had already discharged these, but uh, if you're going to do this, make sure you discharge your capacitors before you go and touch everything. All right, now I want to show you this under here. I'm going to do this by hand. It's going to get a little shaky. See that under there? Those leads go through the board and make the connection under there. So if you wanted to take these out, you can't pull them out because they're connected to the next capacitor or this resistor here. Well, this is up. I might as well take the opportunity to clean that up in there. Uh, what we're going to do is make a loop in the end of these and tie these in together. And while we have them off, we're also going to check these resistors to make sure if they're in spec. We're probably just going to replace them. Um, metal oxide or metal film resistors are inherently quieter than these ca carbon comp resistors. So I think it's going to be a good idea. But let me get these sc two screws back in and we'll get these capacitors and resistors replaced. Okay, we have a red, red, yellow, silver, 220K, 10%. Close. This is the other one. Let's see what it reads. 243, they're getting a little bit out, but it's, it's within, it's actually a little bit out of spec. So we're going to definitely replace those two resistors here and here with a new set. And I'm going to put these capacitors in Okay, as you can see, I got these two in. What I did was I bent the ends down in. I cut them to length first, just a little bit beyond the holes, and I bent the ends and stuck them in there with uh, solder. Now this takes a lot more heat to get these than a small circuit board for a pedal. So uh, I have my Heiko turned up to 899. That's its highest setting. Uh, maybe a little overkill, but it's going to be heated, that's for sure. Uh, you, let me see, can you see that? See how I have that wrapped around there? Now I'm going to touch the solder to that. And this is the one that's backwards, remember. And I always make sure the labels are facing upward in case something goes wrong, I'll know what to replace it with. I'm most likely going to replace all these as well. Okay, you can see I got all these in. Everything's soldered in place. And I replaced all the resistors. They, they were all badly out of spec. Um, and let me flip this over. All right, you can see I replaced this. Left that in there. These were good. I should probably check these disc capacitors. I don't know. They, they seem to be working well. Now here... Right here, I thought that was one capacitor, but it's for the, it's the cathode bypass capacitors on the preamp tubes. It was this, and I thought it was only one, so I only ordered half as many as I needed. I had some on hand here, so I just stuck those in there temporarily to test it. These ones were good. I, I definitely have to replace these with some of these. Those are cheapies, but just to get it running, we're gonna check it. I replaced these ones and this. I didn't have to replace any resistors in here. The, at least the ones I tested seem to be okay. I'm probably gonna replace these ones because that's in the bias circuit, but I can only get the bias down to negative 22 volts 
and it needed to be negative 45. Uh, after I replaced this is when it came back to life. I replaced that too. Because this capacitor had shorted. It still had a lot of resistance to it, but it wasn't a capacitor anymore. Yeah, these ones here look like this. Because there's two capacitors in this package. And that goes in the bag of secret mojo. That's all the dead parts. I got my knobs in there too, just to keep them. Uh, but one of these was real bad leaky. I mean physically leaky, not voltage leaky. Ah. But this is ready to test out. I think we're going to plug it in next time and give it a listen. And then if we're not happy with it, we'll change some values. And I definitely got to order these. So we'll see what we need for in here. And we'll make sure the bias is set well. We'll run it up on the Variac. Nice and slow. All right. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Uh, I'm getting really anxious to try this out. Hope you have a great day.